Hi guys, welcome back to Harry Makes Up. I hope you're all safe and well. Today I'm gonna do the lowdown on cream eyeshadows because it's something I get a lot of questions about and I feel like this needs a whole video. So I'm gonna share my favorite formulas, the difference between um, kind of like how they're marketed so you understand between liquids, creams, etc. Um, and I'll also kind of show you what I'm applying and my tips are like the best brushes, etc. as well. So the best thing about cream eyeshadows, I think, is the fact that you can actually do your base first. And I think they have this myth of being a really, really hard texture to work with. I think people find it quite intimidating. But honestly, as a makeup artist and someone who loves makeup, cream shadows will always be my first choice over a powder shadow. Um, one, I think, again, depending on finding the formula that works for you, they're very buildable, they're really, really long lasting, and a lot of them will kind of work in a way that they start wet and then dry down to a powder finish. So most of us, I imagine, when we think of a cream shadow, we think of something like this. This is MAC Black Track. Um, really, really love the MAC paint pots. You do have to make sure with any cream shadow that you keep the lid on very quickly. As, as soon as they get air in, they will kind of start to crack and uh, reduce in size, they sort of shrink in the tube. So that's just the way they're formulated, obviously to keep them that kind of nice, um, the movement in the texture and keep it slightly wet, you have to keep the lid on. Um, I also love now that obviously more affordable brands, this is a gorgeous color from Maybelline, I absolutely love this. This is the Color Tattoo uh, Maybelline in the shade Knockout. I use this all the time, absolutely love it. I think, Again, the way that makeup works is as soon as something becomes readily available, it trickles down into the drugstore as well, and it becomes much easier to get hold of great affordable options, and the Maybelline uh, tattoo ones are great. Um, what I do with a lot of my cream shadows, I get so many questions about this from makeup artists as well, is I actually put them all into a view set palette. Now, in here I have some Tom Ford ones, some Charlotte Tilbury, I have some Chanel ones. The only ones for me that haven't worked out in a, um, in the view set are the MAC paint pots. For me, I choose to keep those in the glass jars. Um, everything else has been absolutely fine. You can also use a product uh, called, I think it's Duraline from Inglot to revive them if you find that they've gone slightly dry. That's a good product to use to just help revive them. If you have some products you love and you feel like they need a bit of TLC, try that out. So the way I apply these is pretty much the same technique for all of them, whether they're liquid, whether they're cream, whether it's like a mousse. Um, I like a cream shadow that does dry down to a kind of powdery finish, generally speaking. So these are all kind of in the same family. Um, I feel like the reason I like the Charlotte Tilbury ones and the Tom Ford is that they stay very wet when you apply them. So depending on how much you dip your brush in will depend on how intense the look is. So for me, I think the best way to think of them is paints. You can apply a very sheer wash first and you can also reapply and build more layers to create the desired intensity that you want. Next, we come to more of like a pressed cream eyeshadow. So I wanna show you the Rowan ones. This is the new uh, 1111 palette. I'm gonna to link to a video where I'm wearing the look I'm wearing now. Um, so these almost look like they could be powdered. When you touch them, they have a kind of creaminess to them that I think is quite a new formula on the market. Um, and these I like because you can kind of just push them in with your finger and just like tap them on. And with these ones, I feel like a lot of people ask me like, do they set? I think these are the kind of cream eyeshadow that don't kind of set completely in order for them to have that kind of like waxy feel when you kind of like wash your finger over. Um, I think they give it that very kind of rock and roll look. And despite what some people think, I actually really like it sometimes when an eyeshadow doesn't completely set. I think it gives it quite a rock and roll look. So for me, the benefit of something like this is it's not as intimidating as perhaps something like the MAC one I showed first that sets down completely. Um, I really like, so brushes, let's talk brushes. Um, I think for brushes, I really, really like, if I'm packing product on, so for example, I wanted to mention the row ones because I would put them in a cream category. Um, if you wanted to pack the lid, you would use something like this, like a sort of um, flat brush basically, and that would help you pack the product on. Um, so I'm just gonna use the Rowan eyeshadow as an example. So you would pack with a brush like that. And for me, I tend to take cream either just into my socket or slightly above, depending on how much I wanna diffuse out. Then you want, I think, two brushes. So something that has kind of like, this is the MAC 217, uh, so whoever does their own versions. Um, and then this is also the uh, Luxoff Crease, which is 221, so it's slightly bigger. So for me, if you want to move pigment in a cream eyeshadow, keeping in mind some formulas, you'll have less time depending on how quickly they set. 
this kind of brush is where you're going to go in and use quite a bit of pressure and this is what's actually going to move your blend around okay the softer brush something that has you see there's more kind of space in the bristles it's more soft this is the kind of brush you would use if you want to diffuse it further but you're not really moving the pigment or changing it so say you just want to make sure it's really clean under your brow bone this is like the final step when i'm doing someone's makeup i'll just take a brush like this quite a big fluffy brush and this is where you can almost like keep blending out the side so that you get to a point where it just becomes a really soft diffused haze so just backwards and forwards like that. Um, I also think having a few small brushes is really good. Something like a pencil brush. This is great for fitting underneath the eye. Again, anything that's more tightly packed with cream eyeshadows is going to pick up a lot more pigment quicker. So something like this is going to make it go on heavier and you're going to have a more dense application. So again, coming back to those brushes, I said you could have something like this and then go in with this to diffuse go in with that last. And that's one of the reasons I always do my concealer after I've done my cream eyeshadow anyway. Um, but kind of having more brushes will always make you get a more seamless finish. So a lot of these you definitely can use fingers and I do use fingers when I apply them, but I do like to finish with a brush just to make it look that little bit more well blended. So now I want to talk about sheer liquid eyeshadows and kind of liquid eyeshadows in general, because I think for me, a liquid formula, I have some here that are very opaque as well, but I want to talk sheers. If you are looking for a cream liquid eyeshadow that is a more sheer formula, I really, really recommend the Giorgio Armani. Uh, these are their eye tints. 23, you will have seen me use on my channel so often. I'll link a video of it being used, um, one of the videos it's been used in. Um, I love this color. It's almost like the groundwork of like liquid eyeshadows. And what's nice about these is, I'll show you with the shade 27, you can build, so you can start with really, really sheer, can you see how sheer that is? It's almost like transparent, and then as it dries, you can continue to layer. And I think for me, that's something I love about these. If you like that look of a wash, and you want to experiment with adding color into your makeup, these make it really, really easy to do so. So they're my favorite for like sheers. Another option though for shears as well, guys, is taking something like a lip cream. So if anyone has um, something like the uh, Dear Dahlia Velvet Lip Mousse or something like the Sunny's Face Lip Dip, basically what you can do is you can take it and you can use this as almost like a matte uh, eye cream. And it makes such a lovely texture, a really nice kind of soft matte finish that's quite translucent. So that's a nice one as well if you want a sheer colour. Both of these kind of liquid eyeshadows I'd say are buildable, but there's still a softness to them. It's not that same intensity you're going to get from, um, for example, like the kind of classic what we know of as a general cream shadow. The next thing I would say in terms of cream eyeshadows that is a real makeup bag staple is something like an eyeshadow stick. Now, every brand does this from Kiko, from Maybelline, uh, Laura Mercier, Bobbi Brown, Pixie. I've got so many different ones that I love in my pro kit. And I think these are so good because they give you a little bit of play time. And then I would say, generally speaking, most of the kind of pencil formulas, once they set down, they really don't budge. So if you feel like you want to add a bit of definition to your lash line with a cream, you can do that with these. If you want to do kind of a smudgy liner look, you can do that with these. Um, again, I think it's a nice way to add like a darker coal without worrying about anything smudging down your face with these. And different brands, I feel, give you a different amount of play time. So for example, the Nude Sticks formula, I feel like you have to be very, very quick with this before it sets. But then something like say a Bobbi Brown, uh, this one you get a little bit more play time. So keep in mind that different pencils, if you're testing them out um, on yourself, perhaps draw it on your hand and then just wait to see how long it is before you can't move it because that gives you an idea of how long you're gonna have to play with it and if that's gonna make it more difficult for you or not. So another new favorite that I feel like I really discovered earlier this year is the Kosas 10 Second Eyeshadow. These are just phenomenal. I feel like they're such a unique formula because they literally feel like water. So even when you open them, you have to be careful not to tip them too much. But again, I find these are good because they have a mix of some colors that are more matte, some that are more high shimmer or just slight pearl. And they're really, really buildable and super, super long lasting. So if you are looking for something that you have the ability to really work from a sheer up to something more intense, really, really recommend the uh, 10 second eyeshadow. So this is the shade Globe and it's kind of like a real universal suit or shade that is really popular in my pro kit. 
Um, I like these as well because again, I feel like you get a good bit of playtime with these. They're not as intimidating. So I feel like in terms of like entry level cream eyeshadow, if you're looking for something less stressful, I definitely think the Kozas ones are really good. Um, I think things like the Charlotte Tilbury ones are really good if you want to use something that's more of a solid. So from what I can see, they're most of the kind of like different formulas. You definitely can get more moussey ones as well and ones that have more of a gloss, but I feel like they almost start to fall into a gloss category, especially if they don't actually set. So all the ones I'm showing you today, apart from the Rowan ones, pretty much set down in place. I still find the Rowan one really, really long lasting. Um, I just find it has that more kind of like disjointed rock and roll feel, which I love and it really plays with the light. Um, I want to show you guys some more that I think are really, really good. So a makeup artist staple and one that I cannot live without in my kit, honestly, is the Ella Sparse Creamy Eyes. Um, coolest packaging in the world. They're shaped like little bullets. Um, but these formulas, especially the mattes, if you're a makeup artist, I feel like the shades E126 and E27, like this colour, this is E127. And it's such a good warm shade that looks amazing. It's a really hard color to get in a cream. I feel like everyone does that kind of like matte groundwork color really well, but to find a warm tone. And these, again, I feel like they are very opaque very quickly. So if you're looking for something sheer, these are definitely gonna be more into the very, very opaque category. So keep that in mind. But long lasting, they dry down. They feel very fine as well. It's not like a sort of chunky cream. So it's really nice in how it layers. Another favourite for me and nice and dinky size is the Bodyography ones. This is their, I can't remember what they're called now, it just has the name on them, but it's their liquid eyeshadow. I think it's their liquid crystal eyeshadow. And again, like their pinks are really, really lovely. I feel like these provide, again, you can go from kind of quite a sheer and you can build up to quite a punchy intensity. So obviously this one's got a lot of pearl in, um, but you can still kind of blend them down quite nicely with your hand as well, similar to the Kozis ones. Really, really love those. I think the colors are beautiful. Um, the browns, the rust colors, some really, really pretty shimmers in those. I've been using those a lot and really love those. Um, another one I wanna share with you, similar to kind of the Rowan cream shadow that I feel like it's debatable whether it is a cream, is it a powder? It definitely sits somewhere in the middle for me is the Natasha Denona uh, Chroma Crystal Top Coat. So again, it's got that kind of feeling like when you press it down, it almost feels like a cushiony, it, it's dry, but it feels like it could have, it almost has the appearance of a cream. Um, and for me, this blends like a cream. Sorry, I've got loads and loads of stuff in my hand now. But again, I feel like this is very, very pigmented very quickly. So even though it says top coat, I use this like for smoky eyes. So a really, really nice one that I also love um, within my cream eyeshadow collection. So that's it guys, that is my cream eyeshadow favourites of the moment, pro kit favourites and my personal favourites. I would love it if you guys subscribe, let me know what you'd like to see more of and your personal favourite, cream liquid eyeshadow, and I'll see you soon for videos. Stay safe guys, bye!